he has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through offensive line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're supposed to football, not storylines. We have Moses, right tackle, like I said. Uh, he's going to be right tackle for all the players we're watching. I know he took some reps at left tackle, I, I think, in one of the games, like injury or whatever it may be. Um, but looking at his anchor here against Lawrence. Um, we'll talk about his punch and stuff uh, a little bit later, and sometimes it does lead to him um, getting bull rushed back, and, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, in general, hands are wide relatively high and that's going to happen too with him because of, because of how tall he is he's going to be higher than some guys so he has to play with like elite beat uh knee bend just to be average in terms of leverage so you're going to see him be high that just comes with the height so you will hear me mention that but kind of note that down um he gets caught in the chest but he does have in terms of his hands like he's a guy who because he's so powerful just like beckton if he gets his hands on you and even if they're wide, if he can turn, if he can do that, like that quarter turn with his with his thumbs to, to latch his elbows in, and he can sink a little bit and get into his anchor, it's going to be really hard um, for anybody to to bull rush him back. And some people do, and he he will get the pocket pushed. This happened more in 2019 because of his hand placement, where it was typically always wide, always like uh, like that half moon like containment type punch on the outside. Where in 2020 he changed it up a little bit. Um, but here you could see again, ha wide hand placement, but he turns those elbows in, gets tight elbows, um, and lifts, um, Demarcus Lawrence. A lot of these reps are against Demarcus Lawrence, um, power off the insteps and stands him up. So even without bad, even with out, you know, ideal hand placement, he still, you know, his anchor still sets in there and you're going to see some of his, obvious, of his, uh, obvious power. So moving on play two of 72. Marathon to end. Um, my, my voice is going to be gone by the time this is end. So, so if it's somebody's go through quick, that's that's why uh, I know I have a marathon in front of me. Uh, right tackle. Stunt pass off. Um, pretty good. Gets into in, gets into his kick or his kick slide. Um, obviously, you know it's just this one's just a vertical pass set. The um, they run a, a ET stunt and he passes it off. Good job power stepping. So he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily completely drop his post. This foot, he doesn't drop it back. And this foot becomes the, the, the uh, the, uh, post foot. This stays the post foot. And when it, sta when it stays a f the post foot and you step inside, we call that power stepping, um, which if you could pass off with a power step, it's great because then you're still open to get to the outside on the looper. So E T power steps, hands on, stuffs them, shoves them into the into the guard, and then it's still square enough with with his with his uh post foot still up to get back out on the on the uh on the rusher. Gets back out, hands on. Now the quarterback drifts in the pocket a little bit. So you know, he, he's blocking for where he thinks the quarterback is. So yeah, this guy does get off of him a little bit and get kind of into the quarterback's face, but the quarterback is, is just drifting back, you know? So good play by uh, Moses right there. All right. Next play pancake. So we start off with three uh, pretty good ones. Again, uh, the, the, this first season, it bounces around a little bit between negative and positive, but we're still off with three pretty, pretty good plays. Again, power on down blocks, um, specifically when he's not engaged um, first with the guy. Like when he when he's the when he's the uh, the second man into a combo, and he's not fully engaged with a guy. His power shows more when he's actually the first kind of block. Again, he he tends to land high, and he, and he te his base tends to be high, and he doesn't necessarily like climb with those insteps. So he actually gets stood up a little bit more than I would like to see for a guy who's as powerful as he, as he is, but it's because of leverage and, and hand placement. Um, but when he's a second guy in, um, he obviously is, is again, super powerful. Um, and here, 
they both engage at the same time for the, for the most part on the, on the three tech. Um, and they just both near step as they use like that, like crowler technique where they're both going to near step and then, and then climb and get, get off to their, to their uh, guy. But he pops them so far inside. He just climbs, um, as they run this, uh, this jet sweep or sorry, uh, end around. Well, no jet sweep, fake jet sweep into a fake toss into a jet sweep. He climbs to the second level again after, you know, pancaking this guy hands on stays square to second level throw on the second level. So his eyes are there, pushes him. obviously completely throws him inside with, with some aid of, of the right card. Um, but then climbs and a good job taking it angle more to the outside shoulder. The run is going into the outside. So he doesn't want to go inside out. He wants to go outside. in. if any, if anything takes it again, a good angle. So one pop into the ground, good angle to, to, uh, to, play that outside shoulder, let him go inside. If he's going to go inside, Van Rush really get back on the play. Left hand lands inside extension truck, two guys on one play. One, two, <laughs> you like to see it for sure. The power is evident early head allowed. Okay. So this is what he did a lot of in, in 2019, a lot. And this is what I was saying what came as his weakness to this pass set. Whether it be a 45 the reset, a vertical set, a jump set, typically when, when he got out to guys, when he was throwing that punch, his outside foot opened like this pretty much every time. And, and his punch was, was more passive. And again, either whether it be trying to land on the chest, typically it would be on the outside shoulder. He would throw that outside hand and then the inside hand. But the problem with that is um, – if, if guys time it, if guys time the outside hand, they hit it, they bend. He's not necessarily the fleetest of foot. So if they're, if they're speedy and they're twitchy and they can bend, defeat that outside arm, get it on the outside. Another problem with that is it, it, it kind of opens you for, for a lot of things. The outside move, if you can time it, the bull rush, because it's more of a soft punch. If you, if you can angle off the outside, get it in the open, bull rush. Now, he wouldn't get beat cleanly on the bull rushes typically, but he would let the pocket get pushed and collapse in the quarterback. So then you kind of be in the quarterback's face, which is not ideal either. Or because he opens his hips like this, if, you're, if he knows he's going to open your hips, you can also get inside if you're on more of an island. So it kind of opened up, him up to a lot of things in 2019. And again, he changed it for the most part in 2020. So it was a big benefit to him. Um, but here, that's his, pr pretty much his normal pass set. And again, with that hand being more passive, uh, if guys swat at it, that would, yeah, that left hand's landing, but it's onto his back because he's already bending. And it's not like he's, he's, he's quick enough where he could throw outside, inside, and still land on the shoulder. Like he's just not and match with his, with his base. He's, just, he's not necessarily the quickest guy for that. Um, so let's have a hit um, on the quarterback there. And again, you're going to see it again on this next play where it just his, it, this was his normal pass that his, his fr most frequently used technique. Um, we're going to see it again. Beats him on this play, but you can see, again, for the most part, it's another 45 degree set. Opens with the punch. Now it lands actually into the chest this time, but, the, but now that it lands into the chest, left hand comes to the shoulder and extends. So now, so now he's pushing him past the, past the pocket. So it's not going to be bad every time, but it was just he did it, he did it too often um, for it to be successful continually. And here it works because the hand lands, but again, it's, it's typically more passive and you can kind of time it um, with him. Cause it's, it's as soon as you are getting into that contact window, he throws that punch like that or then you then get an opening. But um, in terms of like long arms, stuff like that, if you can land his hands in, you, you know, good luck. And he does have quick hands for the most part. Like when he wants to have quick hands, uh, powerful hands, grip strength, all good. So if you don't beat him with speed or initially, um, if you're gonna try to like use counter moves and stuff on them, not really gonna work. The only time I saw that work was when it was more of him getting knocked off his platform and then trying to to match with uneasy feet was when I saw him get get beat more because he is you know kind of top heavy um, and he's long, so he can tend to lean a little bit. He's beat right here by Lawrence. Okay, again. More of a vertical set this time. Outside punch comes, opens the outside. 
He times it because he does, again, you gotta, you gotta change, you gotta, you gotta change up your sets. You gotta change up your timing. You gotta change from inside to outside. You gotta change up more aggressive punches to, to more passive punches. You know, you can use a hug technique every once in a while, but when you're, when you're set, it's just typically that more of a, of a soft outside hand to, to usually typically aiming at the outside shoulder. Um, guys time it and you're going to see Lawrence upfield one step inside. He knows it's coming cross chop, jump and gets, uh, and, and Moses gets beat for the quarterback hit. So again, this is something that changed in 2020. So, uh, subscribe. If not, if you haven't, you know, try out a month, was it six bucks a month? If you do it individual months, so you end up paying, you know, if you want to do it monthly, end up paying an extra like 20 bucks a year or whatever it is, instead of doing five bucks a month. So five times 12, that's 60. And then I think it's six a month. If not, so you're paying an extra 12 bucks if you want to do it monthly. Uh, right here. I'm not trying to just promote, like, I, I, you never really hear me talk about that, but for this specifically, uh, the second half is going to be better. So Moses beat inside. Again, what happens? 45 degree set, outside open. You want to set a harder edge and that this is what, this is what tends to happen. Either feet freeze or when you punch hips open and you got to be really mindful to continue to widen or at least hold your ground with your hips when you're throwing that outside hand. So again, like I said, people can time that. And if they can beat them inside, you can beat them outside. You can even bull rush them. Um, but you don't want your hips in this position with a guy going inside of you. Spin gets the pressure. Now, did he get, did he, you know, did he let up a sack? No, but it was a, it was a three, oh, five step drop and pretty much out. So, uh, unless the quarterback had to hold onto the ball, you know, but still he's beat here. This is not an ideal position to be in because of the outside punch outside open. Yeah. And sets aren't always bad. Like that wouldn't always be bad if he didn't do it all the time, but, oh yeah. And something I do want to mention too with his, uh, with his film is in terms of the injury. Yeah. I think he had a hamstring injury 2019 camp and he, and he got over it. I saw a player who did not move as well in the beginning of 2019 to the end of 2019 to definitely 2020. So I think he was battling some injuries. I can't say a thousand percent, but to me, it looked, he, he looked like a more athletic player as the season went on, as he got some rest or as the injury healed. And 2020, he looked even better. So um, I think right now we're watching a little bit of an injured Morgan Moses. That might lead to this play um, where good grip strength, but he doesn't play through the whistle. I I don't like plays like this, but again, he might, he may be injured here. You know, you got to finish the play. You're on the field. You got to, you got to finish. And uh, again, it takes like a 45 degree set and and sits down. Um, Mac kind of stacks him and is going to play run to pass. Um, But once and, and that's a good thing about Morgan Moses with, some, with taking some of these more aggressive sets with the Jets in terms of play action. He's going to be able to get their hands on them and then, and then kind of hold them at the line of scrimmage um, because he's going to be doing a lot of play action sets with the Jets and it's going to benefit him. Because even if you're... If you're the- 